Hey, what is up, everyone? Hopefully, everyone's doing well. Um, I got a, a comment on one of my videos on YouTube about Homebrew Browser, and so this gave me an excuse to make a video. Um, I will leave all the links down below, like I usually do. Um, the one good thing about this browser is that, at least this way, um, you don't have to actually go to the website that I've been linking down below in the description, which is the VitaDB.org rigamati.it website if you don't want to download um, vpk files on your computer and then hook up your playstation vita to either usb method or the ftp method you don't have to now um, what you see on that website is actually what you get on the homebrew browser and the rad thing is about this browser is that if you find like a game a utility a plugin that you want just hit the download button or hit x on your PlayStation Vita, and it'll install and unzip the file for you, and it'll add everything. It'll, it'll make folders for you if you need it, if it needs to, which is great. So you don't need to touch anything at all anymore if you're into it. I don't really care for it, quite honestly. Um, during the video, I got some errors, and um, from what the people have said about the error code is that go into you x0 folder slash data slash vita homebrew browser folder and delete the whole folder and see if that works um it didn't with me um it gave me some more error messages um you could always go into the vita shell and delete those error code files which is fine it won't hurt the vita but i would i don't know to me honestly i'd stay away from it unless you don't want to deal with the um computer side of things how you have to drag and drop files over um, so it's totally preference to anybody out there quite honestly so some good things some bad things about it um, it is running on your Wi-Fi um, so there's some lag to it it's some slowness so it's like I just got through saying it's all preference my people my friends and um, so yeah another good thing is I got my shot for the COVID yesterday and I go back in a month and I'm stoked about it I know um, it's a hot topic to discuss and whatnot but one other thing before we get going is that I'm curious as to what you guys think about the PlayStation Store sh shutting down and whatnot in the whole time bomb situation for the PlayStation 4 um, battery life um, you think Sony's in a wrong right here disabling stores and whatnot and preservation of games that's what's nice. That's what the nice thing is about collecting physical copies. But it's you know anybody's game, I guess. And if you don't have room to collect physical, you do digital, I guess. But if uh, let's say if you bought something off Amazon digitally, I mean, if that goes away, do you still own it? But at any rate, let's get this thing going. All right. So this this website will be linked down in the description below along with um, all the other links that I'm going to be dropping down. Uh, what I highlighted was for the PlayStation Vita 1000, which is the fat version, um, you will need a memory card. So this is a great site for people who like to do, who are better visually, who visually understand a little bit more, um, which I do. So I'll leave this link down below. Um, right from here, you're going to go to the GitHub. This is the newest version, came out, in April of 2020 and I don't see them ever updating it so it is what it is um, it's a very small file it takes like five seconds not even probably so I just click on the download link right there for the VPK it's gonna be sent to my download folders folder I should say sorry where all the other download files go I'm gonna open it up I'm gonna drag and drop this VPK to the desktop like I always do because it's it makes my life a lot easier when I uh, Load up the FTP program. Now you can do the FTP or the USB method. Totally up to you. It's all preference. I prefer the FTP method. I don't know why I just do. So we loaded up the free FileZilla FTP client. And right now, let's head over to the PlayStation Vita so we can get the IP address to drag and drop uh, the VPK file over. All right, now we're over to the PlayStation Vita. At the desktop, we'll go scroll down to the Vita shell, load this bad boy up. 
once here. Um, you want to hit select to connect to your FTP or USB. If you hit start, you could just change that to FTP or USB method. Totally up to you guys. So hit the select button. The numbers will pop up. This is what you're going to be needing for your FTP client. So let's copy these over to the FTP client and connect. All right, since we're over here on the FTP, um, enter the IP address that your Vita gave to you. After you load in the credentials, you hit accept or import or whatever it says, connect, I should say. Go to the UX0 folder. Now, I made a VPK folder to keep things neat. You don't need to. You can just drag and drop the FPK, the VPK, um, VPK files right into the root directory of the UX0 if you'd like. It doesn't matter. So once that's done, and you can drag and drop that file, or you could right-click and upload. Totally up to you. Once that's complete, let's head back over to the PlayStation Vita. Now we're back over on the PlayStation Vita side of things. Exit out of the... Uh, a little prompt there that gives you the IP numbers. Next, you want to go to the UX0 folder. Scroll all the way down to where um, where the VPK folder is. Just hit X to install. Comes up with another command prompt. Hit X again. Give it like 50 seconds. You could delete this if you'd like, or you keep it on your system. It's a small enough file. It won't take up too much space. Um, I'm going to clean up some other VPK files, as you can tell right now. The San Andreas and the Max Payne. After this, you could reboot your system or just close out of the Vita shell. I like to reboot just for, you know, just for safekeeping, I guess. All right, once this system boots up, swipe that. And scroll down to where the file is, the bubble, I should say. And you want to click on it to open up the application. Um, I cut this out because when you first start up, it's going to be a black screen. Don't worry. It takes two to three minutes for everything to load up. I thought it was, I thought I bricked it or I did something wrong, but don't worry. I should have kept it in, but for time's sake, it's already at seven minutes and 39 minutes of video so far, so... But once everything loads up, this is what you get. Um, hit the left bumper or right to move over from new games, ports, emulators, and utilities. The cool thing is on the far right, the green, it tells you um, games might be in red for, I think, port or utility. Um, hit the X button to um, make something appear to whatever you want to download appear. I like Connect 4. I always like that game. So this is what my first game is going to be. And it installs everything for you automatically instead of doing the computer and USB method. And I'm just going through some other little um, utilities and stuff like that. Um, but like I said, everything that's on this homebrew browser is actually on that website that I've been linking down below for the past year or so the uh, Vita database so we scroll out of that or swipe out of that there's my connect 4 I think there was an NES game that was like connect 4 I think it was Sprite I don't know if anybody used to drink that soda but I'm pretty sure that was a connect 4 game but yeah I always liked this game for some reason this and Tetris. Tetris was a big game um, that my father used to love to play. So it's a nice little um, little game that somebody created. I don't know who created it, but it's a cute little game. I, I guess I lost. I don't know. But this is what the homebrew... Uh, Utility, utility or homebrew browser does. It installs applications, utilities, ports for you automatically instead of you downloading the VPK file like I've been doing in these past videos um, to the computer, then loading it up with the FTP client to drag the file over to the PlayStation Vita. It's a little time consuming. I understand that. But if you don't have the time or you don't have like 
I don't know, the patience, I guess. You could always do the homebrew browser. Like I said, it's not really for me. It's a little, little laggy. Um, but to each his own, it is running off your Wi-Fi, so please keep that in mind. Um, I don't know if you can see, but my slim Vita has been collecting dust. It hasn't been doing much. And, uh, yeah, I kind of want to sell my PlayStation Fat Vita because I don't really need it. I don't really want it anymore and stuff like that, so I might put that up for sale. I already sold my personal silver one, which I never logged into. Um, sold that for two fifty off Facebook Marketplace. So this is what the um, homebrew browser looks like. It's easy, it's convenient, but it's something not for me. Um, right now I'm going to be typing in Doom so to show you that the search does work, but it comes up with this error code. I don't know why. You could search it out. Um, it'll give you that file, that um, error file there. You could delete that within the Vita shell. Um, it's not going to hurt the system. And what I've been told, what I've read was you delete the UX0 slash data slash homebrew browser folder. Completely delete that and then relaunch um, the homebrew browser. See if that helps out. Or it could be something to do with your um, tie config.txt file as well. See, I typed in Doom again. And there we go. That This is one of the reasons why I, I, will, I won't use this browser whatsoever. Because that would just drive me up the, up the friggin' wall. The error messages and stuff like that.